PA here with a video addressing something. So y'all might be familiar with the Salvation Army, right? Well, I noticed on Twitter that somebody shared something from this one person on... WHAT?! Wait, is that a furry? <laughs> In all seriousness, I heard claims about the Salvation Army was practically coercing people into prayer before they received meals. You know, before you get your meal or any other services from the Salvation Army, you gotta pray for it. Well, the article in which I heard of this came from this one particular news source that you can read at the bottom by Mary Shaw. Though, I find it interesting that this seems to be the only real article that addresses the issue. I still do believe it, however that it is more likely to be true based on what I have seen from my own experience with the Salvation Army and how it has forsaken its own community. Now that being said, I have sent them an email to see if it's true since so far this article is the only thing that records of it. Unless I can have any other viable eyewitness accounts or recordings of such a recent event like this from them, then I would say it has some doubts but can still be considered reliable due to my experience. However, there are better organizations and even better ways of helping out the problem. You can donate to your local food bank, for example, and even offer to volunteer there. I did so twice with mine as we sorted foods out and prepared packages for families that later we drove out to them and even some of the homeless shelters to deliver the food and the packages. Then there are groups like the Red Cross, which the article from earlier erroneously attributes as secular. The Red Cross is a Christian organization today and even in origin, and that's actually a good thing in light of this trend that we're seeing. The Salvation Army seems to make prayer a heavy emphasis and a major emphasis, while the Red Cross doesn't seem to be the case. They are following biblical principles about helping the poor and needy in their time of need without expecting anything in return. For example, Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 tells us that the ones who are gracious to the poor is lending to the Lord, and God will repay us for uh, our deeds. So we as Christians should definitely start getting involved, because this can actually lead to people coming to Christ. Once we make prayer voluntary during our work for the community, and not mandatory. In fact, that is not just a problem with Salvation Army, but also in general. I mean, have you ever heard of the altar call type of prayer in church, or the sinner's prayer? There is a problem with this model, in my opinion, and I'll have Ray Comfort explain why this type of prayer is a problem. From time to time, I'm asked why I don't encourage people to say the sinner's prayer after they hear the gospel. Well, to illustrate why, let me share an analogy. A husband has committed adultery on his wife. She's willing to take him back. I lead him to a door, knock on the door, and say, your husband wants to come back. Are you ready to apologize? He says, yes. Uh, say this after me. Dear wife, dear wife, I'm sorry for committing adultery. I'm sorry for committing adultery. That's ridiculous. To have to lead someone an apology, it should just spill from his heart. And it's the same with God. When we've sinned against God, we realize that we shouldn't have to have someone lead us in an apology. It should spill from our heart. See, shouldn't prayer be more effective if it comes natural? Plus, the gospel tells us to help people as well while we administer the good news. Jonathan Edwards once said, It is especially reasonable, considering our circumstances under such a dispensation of grace as that of the gospel. Consider how much God hath done for us, how greatly he hath loved us, what he hath given us, when we were so unworthy and when he could have no addition to his happiness by us. Consider that silver and gold and earthly crowns were in his esteem, but mean things to give us, and he hath therefore given us his own Son. Christ loved and pitied us when we were poor, and he laid out himself to help, and even did shed his own blood for us without grudging. He did not think much to deny himself, and to be at great cost for us vile wretches, in order to make us rich and to clothe us with kingly robes when we were naked to feast us at his own table with dainties infinitely costly, when we were starving, to advance us from the dung hill and set us among princes, and make us to inherit the throne of his glory, and so to give us the enjoyment of the greatest wealth and plenty to all eternity. Then Timothy Keller, in an article he wrote for Thamelios in 2008, said the following true statement that deserves a big amen in how we are to tend to the poor. Quote, Jesus calls Christians to be 
witnesses to evangelize others, but also to be deeply concerned for the poor. He calls his disciples both to gospel messaging, urging everyone to believe the gospel, and to gospel neighboring, sacrificially meeting the needs of those around them, whether they believe or not. The two absolutely go together. Even George Mueller, one of the famous Christian helpers of the poor, was not emphasizing people to pray before meals or they wouldn't receive any. He was dedicated to helping the orphans know about Christ, but took priority to make sure they were clothed, fed, and had the fair opportunity to receive an education and learn, like many children, need for the basics. It's not just about preaching the gospel, even though that is important, but it's also about keeping people alive due to the kindness of the Christian so that they may receive the gospel and know the fruits of the gospel. Without that, we cannot really say we believe in a gospel that affects or changes our behaviors towards our neighbor. This has been The Christian Anarchist. Have a great day.